everyone. Welcome to another Random Talk Sunday. And today I thought it would be interesting to dive into something that's a little bit more faced with an entertainment. Uh, since a lot of my other Random Talks have been sort of just random. Um, and uh, I thought I would discuss the uh, 2015 uh, blockbusters that are supposed to be coming out within the coming months, all the way towards the end of the year, actually. Um, 2015 is, a, I find, to be a very fascinating year for movies, because we've got a tons of diff a ton of different things coming out this year. Um, and I think it's just cool that we're having all these different things coming out, you know, things that are um, either new or sort of returning to the old, um, you know, or or are basically sequels, you know, that it seems like that there's a lot going on within this particular year when it comes to filmmaking, and I thought it would be interesting to kind of touch on a couple of these, um, and give you sort of my thoughts about them, and, uh, my, uh, understandings of them so far. Um, now the first one kind of out of the gate here is probably the big one um, that people have been talking about for probably, I don't know, for the past, past week or so, um, and that is the sec, the, basically the, um, the first ever technically sequel to the Star Wars, uh, sort of franchise, uh, and that is Star Wars The Force Awakening, or The Force Awakens? The Force Awakens, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Kind of, the title is a little bit of a blur to me. Um, the title choice, I think, is a little bit odd, but I think that within the context of what they're trying to do, I guess it makes sense that they would call it that. But, um, but uh, basically, the first trailer that I initially saw for this uh, particular film did not impress me all too much. I was kind of confused as to what was going on, and I didn't really, I felt like it was just a bunch of random Im images, um, and I didn't really understand how they all connected. I mean, I, I can understand that it was the Star Wars universe, but I didn't get a sense of what was really, like, supposed to be happening within the film. Um, so, but it did give me some kind of sense of chills, and, you know, they had a little bit of suspense there to it. So I didn't think it was an awful trailer, but at the same time, I was kind of going, I don't know what's going on here. I don't really know what they're trying to do with this. I'm kind of confused. Um, but once the second trailer came out for this film, um, I kind of got a little bit more into it, and I was a little bit more invested in the idea of it. Um, what I liked also was the fact that um, J.J. Abrams is considering a, considered to use uh, special effects and, uh, or to use uh, practical effects and he is utilizing those within the film and within that convention that they had um, within Anaheim it seemed like he was listening to the people who initially liked Star Wars and who were probably complaining about the prequels too and how they had way too much CGI within them. And he actually has proof brought up the, the robot that, uh, that he actually, um, he, uh, that, uh, the, the people, um, that were involved with the making of the film designed and made, and it's actually fully operational on its own. And he knew that this would be a better place for the actors because they could actually interact with something. And uh, I think it makes a lot more sense from a Star Wars standpoint because I think a lot of it was uh, based within having uh, pra uh, practical effects and using actual technology. And I think it's interesting that they actually took that into account. So um, I thought that part impressed me and I think it impressed a lot of people within the audience at that convent at that convention so again I think um it it sort of um I, I think it sort of made me sort of uh think that uh, that they were trying to take their um 
their whole setup seriously. Um, and I think the second trailer was actually fairly impressive. I mean, it's, again, it's not perfect. I mean, obviously, <laughs> trailers, I don't think, say all too much about a movie to me, to be honest. Um, I really am not one of those big trailer judges who goes, wow, that was, wow, that was horrible. Wow, that was fantastic. But at the same time, I kind of try to look and see if what it's doing reflects onto what it's trying to convey. And I think this one kind of conveyed itself well, because it was sort of conveying, conveying the title, The Force um, Awakens, basically talking about how the Force is sort of being passed down to the next generation, um, ha and how there's like a lot at stake, and there's a whole new empire that's being sort of developed, and, um, you know, there's a whole sort of new setup going on. And I thought that was very interesting, and I think it made itself very intriguing. So I think that the convention really did help um, with connecting with the audience, and I think a lot of people were impressed by the fact that, you know, that the that the people making the movie were trying to, you know, go and reach out to the people who really um, are invested in this kind of a uh, in this kind of a world and in the Star Wars universe. So, again, I think I think from so far I've seen more positive than negative, at least from what I can tell. Yeah, there's going to be special effects here and there, but I think they are toning it down a bit. Um, and I think the fact that they're actually using an actual robot is really good, as opposed to within the prequels where we got Jar Jar Binks, who wasn't a real thing. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I think definitely there are going to be probably some upgrades here. Is it going to be the same as the Star Wars uh, 4, 5, and 6? Obviously not. I mean, I think I think that this is just going to be a new, a new playing field. And I think they have a lot more to work with because um, the Star Wars they're creating doesn't have to rely so much on um, the past uh, compared to the prequels who had to have a lot of who had to basically really be that connection to the fourth, fifth, and sixth film. Um, and again, that's a lot more difficult task to do um, and really it ultimately embody what ends up happening as opposed to things that happen afterwards where you can play a lot more because you don't really need to be tied in so much with the past because the past is so far uh, away and you know as far as from where they're having this take place and does it come in and the nostalgia play a role absolutely um, but it doesn't have to as far as plot wise is concerned try to connect things um, in, I think, a very, uh, in, in what I would consider to be a more complicated manner. I think it has more liberties than the prequels did. Um, so I think that is actually a really good thing. Um, and, uh, but we'll ultimately see what happens. I mean, I'm, I definitely don't like to uh, come to my final conclusions until I actually see a film. Um, but as far as from what I've seen so far, I think that there is a, a huge consideration of what the, what the fans want. And I think there's also a, a huge consideration as to, um, as to the importance of the story and the characters. Um, and, uh, and uh, I think that's a good sign. Does that mean it's going to be like anything like the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth film? Well, maybe, maybe not, just depends. But at the same time, I think it has the right to be its own thing. And I don't really think I want to even compare it to the fourth, fifth, and sixth films. Because those were different, and those were made at an obviously way different time period than the time period we live in now. So, yeah, I don't really like to um, come to conclusions really on that. But from what I've seen so far, I think it, I, I've seen more good than bad things. 
Now, the next one that I wanted to briefly address is another film that is sort of returning to nostalgia. And uh, that is Jurassic Park, or excuse me, Jurassic World, as technically as it's called, the next installment of a Jurassic Park movie. Now, I don't really necessarily know how they're going to make this plausible as to how it ties in with the other films. I don't know if it's intended to be a, a sequel, probably, um, since, again, they, they do make the world seem like it's way more high-tech and way more, um, I guess somehow they, they paint it as, as like, it's safer um, for, for some reason. I think only because it's, it's so massive and, um, and, uh, also because there's, just seems like there's more technology that allows, uh, for people to be a little bit more on the safer side. But at the same time, there's obviously a lot of things that can go wrong, and I think the only real plot scenario that they could probably give to this movie that would actually be unique and different is what they're kind of trying to come up with at least from what I could tell within the trailer, which is the fact that they're trying to make this um, super dinosaur, this super crazy, um, crazy monster, like uh, sort of like a, uh, a mutated monster, um, like a, like something out of science, um, and, uh, you know, uh, probably mixing genetics or something like that. Um, so that, again, there's more entertainment and people are in awe of its majesty and power and so what, so on and so forth. So basically, it's pretty much bringing up the same kinds of, uh, kinds of themes that the other Jurassic Park films have brought up. Um, I think what it's really going to come down to whether or not this film is going to hold up is the characters. Because I think that was a really huge issue with the sequels of Jurassic Park is this is that they didn't really have any really likable characters, at least from from my uh, experience. They they weren't as engaging. They weren't they weren't as fun to go on an adventure on. And you know that there were just points where things fell really flat for me as far as um, getting into the whole Jurassic park universe um within the within the sequels because they didn't make it seem like it was grandiose or you know they're just kind of like yeah hey, we're making a sequel and look at the dinosaurs um whereas in this i feel like they are trying to kind of create a new world out of it because this is kind of a new park and obviously um a new person is probably behind and sort of making this idea so uh again i i think it can go it can go either way um it, i almost want to say i'm kind of neutral on this more so than i am saying positive or negative um only because i don't really see again i haven't really heard all of that much when it comes to this film but from what I can tell, I think what they're doing is uh, a little bit more unique than the sequels. And from what I can tell from the trailers, I can't really say whether or not the characters are going to hold up. And so that's really my biggest concern. So that's why I'm kind of like in the middle on this. I'm, I'm sort of on the fence. I'm not really sure what to think of it. I, I'm just like, I, I, I hope it's good. And the thing is, I want these kinds of films to be good. I mean, they... They do have this certain nostalgia factor to to me. I mean, I would like them to have that same kind of standard that the other previous films did have. Um, so, but at the same time, I can't really feel one way or another. Um, I'm just hoping that there uh, that there is some thing there that gets me uh, invested into into the plot and into what's going on and I think a large part is going to be whether or not the characters hold up um, and so far from these trailers I can't really tell I can't really say um, how these characters are going to hold up so I'm kind of on the fence 
Um, but I'm hoping it, it has some value. I hope it, I hope it takes all of the criticisms that were received from the sequels and it tries to create a whole new dynamic and a whole new, um, a whole new Jurassic Park universe and tries to do something positive with it. Uh, but as far as for what I can tell, I can't really say if that's going to hold up or not. I'm hoping it does, but I don't know. <laughs> um, the other one that I wanted to talk about is the Avengers Age of Ultron film, which is pretty much the prequel to, or excuse me, sequel to uh, the first Avengers movie. Um, and from what I can tell, I think they are trying to up the stakes a bit. Um, you know, it, it seemed like within the first film that the task, the ultimate task that they're doing, um, is difficult, but they seem to kind of pull it off, you know, with some relative, uh, ease. And if then, you know, it, the first film was kind of, it felt like an introduction because it was introducing all of these characters being together. So, in doing so, I think you can't really up the stakes all too much. Um, and, uh, 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 but as far as the action is concerned, the characters, I think they all ultimately do work. I mean, some are obviously more interesting than others. Obviously, the biggest players probably are Iron Man, uh, Thor, and the Hulk. Um, and, uh, as far as the other two, Hawkeye and, uh, um, Black Black Widow, I don't really feel like those characters have too much to them. But uh, as far as the other one, other three, main three are concerned, I think they have a lot of potential to kind of... Oh, and Captain America too, which I guess you could say he's kind of eh, he's kind of in between. <laughs> he's in between the three and the two, you know, the, in, in between the not as developed to more interesting uh so again and i think a lot of that has to do with the fact that sometimes some of these films don't even give um their characters their own separate movie like for um black widow we didn't get a separate movie and for hawkeye we didn't get a separate movie um even with the hulk we really didn't get all too much too but at the same time you know those other characters were a little bit probably more invested in because they actually get their own movies. So again, it's 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 sort of hard to say um, how this this one is going to play out. But it seems like, from what I can tell, they are trying to up the stakes a little bit, and they're trying to make new connections with the with the characters and things like that. So it, it seems like, from what I can tell, they're doing what they're supposed to kind of do when it comes to a sequel that's supposed to be like this. Um, and there might be some fairly interesting scenarios, and I think the fact that they are introducing a new villain, they are um, trying to bring in sort of um, a new scenario or scenarios, uh, I think works for this kind of a blockbuster, you know, superhero movie. Um, as, far, as far as to how um, engaging and exciting it's going to be. It, it seems like it has a lot of potential to be that. Um, but again, there's not a whole lot that I can really derive from this. Um, but from what I can tell, it seems like from, from what they're doing, uh, that they're in a more positive direction than a negative one. As far as from what I can see, um, when it comes to the the characters and the plot here um, because I think there's a certain amount of familiarity uh, with them whereas with Jurassic Park we're introduced or Jurassic World excuse me we're introduced to completely different characters a completely different scenario so we don't know if that's uh, that's going to hold up um, whereas with Avengers there is a history there is a um, an establishment of the universe and all that. So there's a lot more that I feel more confident in, uh, which I think leads me to think in more of a positive light uh, when it comes to this uh, 
uh, particular sequel. I think it'll probably do really well uh, and probably win over a lot of money, like a lot of the other films that I've been mentioning will probably win over a lot of money, so it only makes sense. Okay. Uh, but I think that's really ultimately all I can say about that one. And excuse me, that was just my mom saying something. Uh, next one is the one that I kind of dread talking about because I think it's, it's always good. Um, the next Terminator movie. Now, this one is trying to kind of be a prequel, like, somewhere in between the second and third, I am guessing. But from what I can tell and from what I've seen from the trailers, like, this Terminator does not add up to what other Terminator films have been doing within the past. Like, there's just a lot of things that you will see within the trailer that just don't add up or don't amount too much and don't make sense within the context of the other films. I mean, if this was a completely new movie, like, I could be a little bit more on the neutral end of this, but knowing that there's a lot of history with Terminator, knowing that they're trying to cash grab this one, um, leads me to believe that this is really a bad idea. and. Um, just by looking at the trailers, and if you've watched the Terminator films and you watch this trailer, like, the trailers really don't, they, they are just so, there's just so much in, lack of continuity in a lot of it that it is hard to get even a little bit excited for it at all. Um, so I would think to stay clear from this one, I mean, it doesn't make sense within the context of the other films, and it just seems like it's just a big, giant, you know, splooge of violence, and and it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of character to it, a whole lot of, you know, intelligence to it, like the other films did have, except the third and the fourth one. <laughs> Even though the fourth one, I, I, I think, was at least the trying, um... This film doesn't even look like it's trying from the trailer, so I think it's a definite um, negative end on me, and I'm definitely not um, going to invest my money into it. Um, and uh, if it eventually comes out on DVD and they give it an okay rating, then maybe I will consider it. But for now, and the only reason I mention it being a blockbuster is because it is Terminator, and when people see Terminator sign <laughs> big money second to last one that I want to talk about is Mission Impossible 5 from what I've seen so far this looks like a good direction um, from what I can tell uh, it is falling more along the end, ends of the last film because uh, it seems to maintain that level that tone and that level it doesn't seem like it's talking down to you it doesn't try to be stupid so I think there are there are there is a, a good potential for it. So, as far as from what I can tell, it seems uh, uh, like it's going within a positive direction, um, and uh, I think there is a lot of uh, a lot of good things that can come out of it, um, considering that they handled the last one with a little bit more intelligence and the fact that you know the trailer sort of gives off that same vibe, at least to me from what I've seen so far. So. Um, yeah, I think, uh, it'll be, uh, it'll be a good one. Now, last one I wanted to talk about is actually a really biggie, um, and that is Spectra, the next James Bond movie that'll be coming out, I believe, um, within the winter season. And that's the interesting thing about blockbusters today is, 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 is that there's a ton that happened during the summer, and there's also a ton that happened during the winter. And I think that that is uh, sort of a there's sort of a good reason for that, and that's because usually in summer people travel and they do other things, um, whereas in winter, you know, uh, the harsh weather can leave you sort of trapped indoors. Same way the heat wave can keep you sort of indoors too during the summer. Um, so I think they're trying to provide this sense of balance, and I like this idea of making sort of the 
the better films within this summer slash winter sort of maybe even falls or period. Um, but uh, basically, Spectra seems to be leaving directly off of um, where Skyfall left off of, and it seems to maintain that similar Skyfall tone. So I think depending on whether you enjoyed Skyfall will probably depend upon your enjoyment of this film. Um, but I think there seems to be a lot of intelligence to it from what I've seen so far. It seems like we're diving a little bit more into James Bond's past. We're getting into a little bit more depth with his character as opposed to just kind of scratching the surface. Um, and uh, it seems like we have a really interesting villain. So I think there is a lot of, um, I think there's a lot of potential to it. And I think it tries to be kind of, it's kind of returning to that classic old traditional bond of being very sophisticated and suave. Um, but at the same time, kind of mixing in this new kind of dark grit. Um, and I think that's really interesting, and I'd like to see how they go with this. Um, it could be good, it could be bad. But on the one hand, I, I feel there's more good that can come out of this kind of a, a direction than bad. So I, I still have positive uh, feelings for it. But, uh, yeah, those are all of the films that I really wanted to talk about. I thought it would be interesting to discuss more of the new films coming out, since I do talk a lot about uh, older older products. Uh, but but I think uh, there's a lot of potential, and, and I think there's a lot of good that can come out of these films. I don't like to judge films based on whether or not they're new or old. I, I just judge them based upon my opinions, my thoughts, my ideas. Um... But yeah, I think that's really ultimately all I can say. However, if there are any questions, comments, concerns, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a pleasant day, week, month, and year. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.